and simplicity, let's explore the blue note. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone master classes and product reviews, please do subscribe and please do hit the like button. I won't beg. Now today we're continuing our lesson on the minor blues, an extension of last week's lesson on the minor pentatonic. We're studying the language of Lou Donaldson and seeing how he uses blues language over the minor blues progression. We're gonna take some phrases by Lou Donaldson, alter them, tinker with them, and start to study the blue note, what it is, and how to use it outside the context of the blues scale. So first things first, let's just listen to one of the phrases we're gonna be using. I'm going to play it through once, listen, and then sing along, or if you have your instrument out, actually go get your instrument, then play it back to me just to get a feel for how it sounds and what we're studying. And this is where we're going to start learning phrases from the masters, not with the blues scale. Now, the blues scale is kind of a crutch that a lot of us have used as educators. I've been guilty of it as myself as well. I don't think of the blues scale as so much as learning the language as a vocabulary list. It's a list of notes, but it's missing a few key ingredients, mainly syntax and pronunciation. So imagine if you had a list of vocabulary words, Johnny, dog, the, bit. How you order those can have a big effect on the meaning, especially if you're Johnny. Well, that's kind of the problem with the blues skill. It's a collection of notes, but it's not really useful when we listen to and study some of the phrases of great players. I don't think it's the best way to become a native speaker. We need syntax. We need pronunciation in context. So instead of just learning the blues scale, which is a handy collection reference of the notes, we're going to learn how the masters use it first by studying Lou Donaldson. But first, let's actually do take a look at the blues scale and take a look at this collection of notes and see which of these notes Lou Donaldson and others are pulling from. So, I'm going to play it once. Feel free to play along with me. If you don't have your horn, sing along. It's just about as useful. And in this context, you'll notice the blue note is that sharp four or flat fifth, presented kind of as a passing tone. Now, the term blue note can be useful. It's also deeply problematic and more importantly, way beyond the scope of this particular video. But we're going to take a look at how many of my favorite players, and yours hopefully soon, do not use that note as a passing tone, but in a much different way. And much better than any collection of notes. Let's take a look at the masters. Now, most of the phrases we're using today are coming from Lou Donaldson's Blues Walk. Now, Lou Donaldson is not one of the more famous alto saxophonists that have ever walked the earth. As of the making of this video, he's actually still alive today in his 90s, native of North Carolina, actually went to college right down the road from the Saxophone Academy. He's one of my favorite players. I love the breadth of his career and also the alto sound that he has. It's fascinating. In the beginning, he was a straight ahead swing and bebop player, burning bright. Uh, blazing technique, much in the vein of Charlie Parker. Later in his career, he did more kind of soul work with organ trios. But fascinatingly, he always sounds like Lou Donaldson, regardless of the genre and the style. That same warm, full alto sound and that kind of vibrant vibrato he has. I really love it. Now, today's examples are coming from Blues Walk off the album titled Blues Walk, 1958 release on Blue Note Records. Interesting about this record, in addition to being a jazz quartet, there's also a conga player, and it's engineered by Rudy Van Gelder, not related to the conga player, but it's interesting in the fact that it's a very sonically pleasant album to listen to. Uh, Rudy Van Gelder was the world-famous engineer that worked at Blue Note Records, kind of created what some refer to as the Blue Note sound. Heavy use of tape reverb machines, 
but I really like it. So download, favorite, stream, buy, whatever this album. It's really great. So let's listen to the opening phrase of this melody. I'm going to play it once. Play it back to me. We have both the alto and the tenor part. Alto on top, tenor on the bottom. Again, if you don't have your instrument, sing it back, matching the inflection and articulation. <laughs> I want you to find the blue note, that sharp four flat fifth. Listen again, see if you can hear it, and see where he places it. see it's on the beat it's not a passing tone it's not only not a passing tone it's emphasized heavily emphasized on the downbeat now is this an anomaly is this an exception that proves the rule well let's look at another phrase from the melody i'm going to play it once i want you to repeat it back to me and notice again where that blue note that sharp four flat fifth sits in the melody Again, sitting prominently on the beat, not a passing tone at all. Maybe the third time's the charm. Can we find three examples of the blue note sitting prominently on the beat, not as a passing tone? Let's listen to another phrase coming from his solo, I think in the second chorus. And of course, you get the picture, seeing the limitations of using the blues scale as a scale, like the bebop scale, where it always says it's the passing tone. It's not without its uses, but it certainly has its limitations. And these are not, this usage, limited to Lou Donaldson. Let's take a look at Hank Mobley off Soul Station. <laughs> Now, of course, I could scan my record collection and find lots of examples of that note being used as a passing tone, but the chances are it's more in a bebop context, and these are not cherry-picked examples. These are very common sounds that I hear when I listen to, especially the minor blues. They're all over my record collection, and a great place to start my preference in learning to play the blues this way rather than noodling up and down the blues scale. So let's get you playing in some exercises. We have call and response exercises. I play four bars, you repeat them back to me, listening closely to the articulation and the inflection, the pronunciation, uh, the first time, and then repeat them back to me. We've got alto and tenor. Slow these down when necessary. You can use the gear icon on desktop or the three little dots in the menu if you're on mobile. Slow them down and repeat where necessary. <laughs>
playing. You sound really good. Maybe. I have no idea. But I'm rooting for you. So practice these. Slow them down and get these under your fingers. Now, I will be back next week with a very interesting product review I think you'll be interested in. And then in December, we're diving into the art of ballad playing, studying tone and vibrato. Now, for the Americans, I hope you have a most wonderful family, turkey-filled Thanksgiving. And more importantly, go practice. <laughs>